Hello to the Chicos and the Chicas. I am back at you with the Hans Niemann game because that's the trend. But I always put the chess coach Andras learning educational twist on it instead of the brain dead drama. So what happened was, was that Hans played an absolutely stunning game against Levon Aronian, which we shall have a look at now. This was, ladies and gents, a Sicilian, which started off with a Nidorf. Uh, lately, by the way, uh, Lev has been experimenting with a fairly wide opening repertoire, e4, d4 with white, and uh, e4, e5, e4, c5 with black. Quite impressive stuff. And here he invites a Nidorf, to which Niemann says, Nay, brother, not in my house. I don't want any theoretical debates. Not today. And plays the rather mundane bishop d3. And then uh, Lev... Uh, picks g6, which is one of the many very good continuations against bishop d3, offering here a transition to the dragon, um, or dragon setups, I should rather say. And what comes now is actually most remarkable. Niemann plays f3, which is rather standard in the dragon structures. Bishop e3 needs to be played, but knight g4 is annoying, so f3 is necessary to shield that. And after bishop g7, he pulls back to e2. And I cannot help but mention here something that I, occurred to me today as I was thinking about what to uh, exactly say about this game. More than 10 years ago, maybe even 15, I've read a very funny, because most of them were actually very funny, Viktor Korchnoi analysis in the New Inches magazine, where he was analyzing a game he played against Wang Yue. And in that game, I don't know how to pronounce Wang Yu, Wang Yu, I don't know. Anyway, in that uh, game analysis, he, he made a mention that uh, at one point about Wang Yu claiming that uh, it's quite interesting to note that these young grandmasters, says Coach Noi, play this game as if their trainer, their coach, was the computer. Oh, wait a second. Actually, that is right. Their coach is the computer, which is why they play such ugly moves. And I trying my best to quote that more or less word for word, he definitely did use the ugly. And the point was, was that Korchnoi argued that after a couple of moves that Wang Yu made, that um, his coach would have told him to go and stand in the corner for playing a move like that. And here, Hans Niemann plays bishop e2, which once again, all chess purists and chess classicists would go like, mate, what are you doing? And uh, that is just to before anyone gets funny ideas about what I'm trying to say, I'm not suggesting any foul play here whatsoever. In fact, this is not even on the list of recommended moves. But this is just such a, a typical move of someone who is a product, for want of a better word, of the engine era. Like, just no respect whatsoever for general chess principles and classical values and rules. No, if engine says good, it's good, and I don't care how ugly it is. And yeah, th this is just uh, a shocker and a half. And he goes on to win. Knight d7, castles, b6, bishop e3, and now we are in a stock standard Sicilian setup. Make no mistake, except that white wasted the tempo. Unbelievable stuff. Bishop b7, queen d2, queen c7, g4. And again, I'm like, dude, what's your story there? g4 would be a perfectly sensible move in this uh, dragon setup if you had castled queenside. But with kingside castle now g4, sheer insanity. And here the come h6, according to the engine, would have done the damage, after which it's very difficult to prove that this move is more than a bluff. Um, and yeah, very curious stuff. Here Levon, that was the first time when he thought for longer, played knight e5, allowing g5. And this creates a little bit of an awkward situation amongst the knights that is very, very typical in the Sicilian defense. And that is that after say b3, f4 is actually putting this knight in a very awkward spot forcing it to go back to c6, which then allows white to play knight d5. So usually these two knights in many, many Sicilian lines, especially in Chevening and setups, they stand poorly because they tend to trot on each other's toes. And here too is the case, although the engine argues here that rook c8 would have been playable with knight d5, queen d8, and the subsequent e6 would uh, sort of restore uh, black's... Uh, 
play to or reset it to normal, I should rather say. C6, uh, C4, E6, Knight, C3. And we play a very odd Hedgehog where White just went total gank hole with this G4, G5. But D6 is also a little bit tender. So there are plus and minuses on both sides. The engine cruelly claims absolute 0-0 zero, zero here. Now, instead, however, Lev went with the immediate E6, trying to deny Knight D5. But now came the disaster, or rather I should say disaster, struck with F4. And this was the point where, I think, where Lev realized that after Knight C6, he would have fallen victim of this beautiful sacrifice. Takes, takes, Knight B5, Knight D6, check. King E7, Rook A, D1 with tremendous attack. And because I'm really hammering the educational value of every video I make, I want you to take a mental note about this position more or less, because I have got something to show you. So this is clearly better for white with the king stuck in the middle, f5 pending, and um, yeah, the king is really, really vulnerable on e7. Knight f5 check ideas with queen d7 are also present, so this is a complete mess. And so in order to dodge this bullet, uh, in this position, Lev decided to get cute and play rook c8, hoping for fe, in which case he could uh, counter punch on c3. But actually, textbook case out of the frying pan into the fire, he walked even more hardcore into knight bd5, which is now complete carnage. What's quite shocking, by the way, is the rem remarkably little time spent on the entirety of the game for either side. Very, very weird stuff. I mean, this position here demanded very, very thorough thinking, in my opinion, for black. And somehow it was just, yeah, very quick E6. And uh, after F4, uh, it was too late to realize that the Knight B5 shenanigans were actually decisive. Anyway, Knight B5 happened. Knight B5, Queen takes C2, Knight D6 check. And here, of course, King F8 seems to be uh, the more tenacious defense hoping to tuck the king away and after fe queen takes d2 rook f7 in between check king g8 and bishop takes d2 although white is completely winning uh with a piece up but at least it's not mate king e7 on the other hand walked into this queen b4 idea mental note number two and now it is just carnage because white is threatening with two different uh, double checks and both of them lead to mate. And here actually Levon, perhaps graciously, seeing that he was dead lost no matter what, he decided to allow said checkmate. And the nicest one here, by the way, which is a real ripper, is king d7, queen e7 check, king c6, and knight d4. An absolute stunner, top job uh, by the American. By the way, a really, really, really cool game. Despite... The opening, which really makes me like, whoa, don't, don't show me that stuff again. But I have got something else to show you. When I looked at this game, I had a very strong sense of deja vu of, I have seen this motif before. And today when I went to the gym, it clicked in my head that, yes, no die classics, bro. I have seen it. Ulman Jubojevic presented to you by me. This, ladies and gentlemen, was the game between Wolfgang Ullmann and Jubomir Jubojevic, two uh, excellent players from the 80s. Jubojevic was top five in the world, and Ullmann was a very strong uh, East German player as well. So, yeah, very cool GM. And this was their game, which uh, I think I recorded once for a video, but I don't remember, or maybe I put it in a course. And uh, I can't help but note the analogy, right? Like you already see that the skeleton of the position is the exact same. Marotzi bind stuff, the d6 pawn is weak, the bishop's knights are the exact same. It's like, Hans Niemann, did you know this game? I challenge you, buddy. I don't think he did, but uh, maybe I am being a bit too cocky here. Knight takes c6, and after king e7, queen b4, and tada, exact same story. Uh, repeated. Uh, the game was played in 1978 between these two uh, old school legends. And here, Jubojevic uh, decided to run for the woods with King F6. And um, yeah, 
after uh, F4, he just got uh, essentially mated in a superb fashion, by the way, which is perhaps even more beautiful than the Neiman game, because G5, FE5 happened, and after King G6 comes the coup de grace, Knight takes F7, a sensational finish off with King takes, and the rather unexpected Matutski to bring another good friend into this conversation, the Matutski with Bishop H5 seals the Deal. So that was, ladies and gentlemen, a game recap, a history lesson, and a no die classics in one go. I hope you appreciated that. I really enjoyed recording this. Take care. I will be back with more content soon. Don't forget to like, to sub, to comment, and I will be back with the next video soon. Thank you. Bye.